Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson. I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. We've recently just gotten off of a two-month government-imposed lockdown, which means that I haven't been able to get into the office to make wonderful videos for you wonderful people. But I'm back. I'm here. And during that time, some of you were very thoughtful and wrote me an email and said, Dude, you still around? We crave your videos. Okay, those are my embellished words, but still, I was touched. <gasps> And one of the suggestions that was brought to me was to talk about the necessary equipment for a gemologist and how much it costs. What should I buy first? What can I buy later? So today I'm going to do just that. When you're buying equipment, some of us are tool fiends. We like to buy all the things. Just because if I have it, I have the unlimited potential. It's like books. You can never have too many. Because to us, they represent potential. If I have this, then I can dot 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 even if I don't. And I get that, I totally do. But at the same time, gemological instruments are not cheap. Some of them are inexpensive and some of them are incredibly expensive and also totally not necessary for you. So don't think you're gonna buy everything. Even top labs don't necessarily have everything. And as treatments and these things develop, and become more complex, different instruments are important. So there are many scientific instruments that are used in our top labs that were actually developed for testing food and things like that. So don't worry about buying everything, just focus on what you need to do the job that you need to do. So throughout this review, I will be talking about the different professions or different jobs that will need which tools. Obviously this won't be comprehensive, but I hope it will help you based on your path in this trade. So for gemstone identification, which is what a gemologist typically does, you are going to need a microscope, and that's going to be the most expensive thing that you will probably buy. A high quality microscope can easily be $1,000, and that's just for the head. The head contains all of the optics, and then there's also a gemological base, which can also cost $1,000. This is a nice weighted base that typically has a relatively sensitive distance control that can hold your objective lens nice and steady while you examine the gemstone. Built into the stand there is typically also an illumination basin, and you can switch this back and forth between direct lighting and dark field lighting, which brings in light from the sides of the stone, and that allows you to intimately get to know that stone, see its inclusion scenes, and learn a lot of things that you can't see using just a loop. So depending on what country you are in, an average microscope just at the entry level that qualifies for a gemologist is going to cost somewhere around $2,000. And while that is a lot of money, definitely keep in mind that this is something you buy one time in your life. If you want to upgrade, you can upgrade, but you won't have to upgrade. Many of the microscopes that you're going to see when you go and study gemology are from the 70s, and they still work fantastic. Obviously, they're not so attractive anymore because they've been you know, touched by all sorts of grimy students over the years, but they are precision instruments. And just like camera lenses, if you want to resell your microscope, you're going to get a pretty good price for it. Because the fact of the matter is that the optics are still intact. As long as you take care of it, your $2,000 investment is going to hold its value pretty well. So the microscope is mostly necessary for a functioning gemologist who needs to know, is this stone treated? Perhaps where does the stone come from? Because the final determination of a lot of those treatments or origin determination really comes down to the inclusion scene backed up with other data that might come from advanced machines in a laboratory. But lab technicians or lab gemologists are also using these same types of microscopes to do their final decision. The next thing that every gemologist is going to need is a refractometer. A refractometer is one of my favorite tools because it gives you very clear information, numerical information, about the stone's refractive index. And the refractive index gives you a very definitive idea of what stones this can be and what stones it cannot be. Many gemstones will have overlapping refractive index ranges, but perhaps they have completely different colors, or their other characteristics are different. So it's a very important tool. My personal favorite refractometer I keep in this little case, nice and travel size. And I also did a tutorial that you can watch over here. The basic refractometer is the body that has a glass hemisphere in here, and the material that they use for the hemisphere can be different types of materials. But what you basically need is a body with a lens, and I prefer the kind that have a removable lens. And on top of the lens sits a polarizing filter. If you want more on those details, go watch that video. For example, if you're going around to pawn shops and you're looking for good deals on colored stones, you want to be sure what that stone is, or at least have a higher likelihood of knowing what that stone is, then having one of the less expensive models of refractometer is definitely acceptable. Some of the more expensive refractometers out there in the market that are associated with certain gem schools <coughs> are not the best. I absolutely prefer this one, and there's a link to it down in the description, 
over some of those other big name refractometers. And many gemologists that are only testing fasted stones, in fact, use the ones that are maybe even half the price of this one that have a built-in light. This one, I have to put a light in through the back. Typically we use like a mag light that has full spectrum light. And so it really comes down to what do you need your refractometer to do? If you need it portable, inexpensive, and only testing faceted stones, you can go for the less expensive model. If you need to test everything, go for a more expensive model, but it doesn't have to be that big brand name either. And especially if you're in the United States, these are easier to acquire directly from the manufacturer, which saves you cost and also helps support a small American business. Love it. So the range of the refractometer is going to go somewhere from about $400, I believe, up to about $1,000. This particular model currently, I believe, is about $800. So again, it's not a cheap instrument, but the type of information that this instrument can give you is worth far more than the instrument itself. If someone is coming to you with a cut piece of glass and they're calling it a Savorite Garnet, which could be several thousand dollars for the piece, being able to quickly know that this person is a fraud and that you don't need to deal with them saves you very valuable time. And again, this is the kind of instrument that if you take care of it, you only need to buy once. The refractometer liquid that needs to go with the instrument is more expensive and that is a consumable, but at the end of the day, you can use one tiny vial for a long time depending on how often you are testing stones. Even a lab that is using it every day and multiple, multiple, multiple times a day still uses that same vial for many months. So that's the refractometer, second most important thing and also second most expensive thing that you may want to buy. And the people that will need that really are, again, gemologists. An average hobbyist is not going to need that. Though someone who is going around and buying stones at a pawn shop would benefit from having a refractometer. You could just keep that in your bag, go up, test a bunch of stones, decide what you wanna buy, and get deals that you couldn't even get in the gem market. Because most pawn shop dealers, even if they know what the stone is, have no idea of the international pricing of those stones. It's a complicated business and they're over there trying to sell TVs and golf clubs and guns and whatever else. So if you're going to get into that line of work, then definitely look into getting a refractometer. The next instrument that is absolutely worth your time if you're a gemologist or a gem cutter is a polariscope, which I have a tutorial on right over here. A polariscope is an instrument about this big. It costs somewhere around one to $200. It's easy to use and it gives you a lot of important information as well. It's useful for gemologists because it helps distinguish types of stones very quickly and it's absolutely essential for many cutters because using polarized light can show stressed areas inside of a stone. Just like if you've ever taken the wrong type of glass and put it in the oven, when you heat it up, it cracks. That's because of stress and tension. The wrong types of glass cannot distribute that tension well, or they've already got tension inside of them that we don't see. So when they are aggravated with heat and the glass starts to expand, it just cracks and then your meatballs are all over the place. It's terrible. In gemstones, there can be very similar flaws. That stress that's in the stone from when it formed in the earth and it came up through the earth is still hidden in there and you don't see it with your eyes without the correct assistance. Polarized light can do that for us. So this one device, something like one to $200, can give you very good information about where are the stresses in certain stones. Sometimes it's very obvious. There may be a full plane of tension. And so if you're thinking to recut that stone, that could be very dangerous for you. Diamond cutters, oftentimes they will have a microscope that's fitted with a polariscope or a polarizing filter. And so the gemologist that observe the stone before it's cut can talk to the cutter and say, you need to be careful in this and this area to make sure that you don't crack the stone because obviously your investment is high. You don't want to destroy it in manufacturing before you even get a chance to sell it. So both as a tool for identification and also as a diagnostic tool to know whether or not there are certain stresses in the stone that might be avoided and avoid damage to your investment, the polariscope is a very useful tool. And again, we're talking about something that you buy once. And the polariscope is a very valuable tool for colorless gemstones as well, both colored and colorless. Because of the properties of gemstones and how easy this tool is to use, I can look at a green stone, not know whether it's a savorite or an emerald, and find out within seconds whether it's one or the other or something else entirely. Very useful tool. Most of the other tools that you will need fit inside of a case this size. And this is what I take when I go around to the market. It contains many things that I talked about in this video, but a quick overview. Of course, you've got your trusty, trusty loop. Don't go anywhere without one. Being able to magnify to 10 times magnification is absolutely essential for knowing truths about your stones. This can give you a heads up on certain treatments as well as the nature of certain stones. I've been able to, using my loop, know whether or not a sapphire is heated or unheated. 
Not always is that the case, but it can make me aware of something. Whereas the dealer of the stone may not be aware of it. They may know that the stone is a certain color and they may hope that it's a certain price, but if they're not certain whether or not the stone is heated or unheated, and I have clear evidence because of my loop, that puts me in a very different bargaining position. So loop, very important. I did a review on several different types of loops that you may be able to watch over here. Otherwise, the link will be down below in the description. Another of the tools you will absolutely need and do not leave home without is a good torch. A nice, strong flashlight is just the thing for checking out gemstones. Right here, I've just gotten hold of my Noble flashlight, which is made one by one by a family in Mogok. I'm a big fan of this Noble flashlight because it fits right in my hand. No extra bulk, no extra weight, but a lot of strength and a good, strong battery. The one I had previously was a three-colored LED light, which, as you can see, is a bit larger than my hand, but still a decent size and also quite powerful. If you look at them side by side, you'll see that the footprint of my Noble flashlight is a bit more convenient than this LED one. It's also a bit lighter, so it's nicer to carry around in the day-to-day. -day. The only major advantage of the three-way LED is that it has two colors of visible light, white and yellow, which can be helpful in differentiating certain types of inclusions. It also has a long-wave UV light, which helps reveal fluorescence in gemstones. So whichever you prefer, please make sure that you get a nice strong flashlight to take with you when looking at gemstones. Though in a pinch, you can use the light on your cell phone. Definitely not ideal, but possible. Other things that have gotten in my bag of tricks well, case of tricks, whatever, is this right here, a dichroscope. And this is important both for gemologists and cutters. If gem cutters have nothing else aside from a loop, they need to have a dichroscope. If you're cutting colored gemstones, this will help you to know if the stone is pleochroic, meaning it has multiple colors, that can help you to be aware of how you need to cut the stone in order to show the color that you want. Pleochroism is a directional color property. So depending on which direction the crystal is oriented and therefore cut, certain colors are going to be coming out based on your fasting design. This costs something like 20 bucks. There are two major types out there. I prefer the calcite type. So very inexpensive, but very valuable information. This is the dichroscope. Another instrument that not everybody needs, but I really like, because again, it's portable and gives you very diagnostic information, is the spectroscope. This little cigarette-sized instrument can tell me, without a shadow of a doubt, if I'm looking at jade or if I'm looking at some other type of stone, because jade will show me, for sure, a diagnostic line with this tool. So when I look at a gemstone, pumping a good amount of light into it, it shows me a rainbow. And then certain gemstones, based on their properties, will show different patterns of light absorption. As I mentioned jade, jadeite jade, when I pump light into it and then observe it with the spectroscope, I will see a dark line over in the violet area of this rainbow. Because all the pieces of jade that I've inspected, regardless of their color, have had this color absorption line. Why is that? I don't know. You'd have to talk to a physicist or a mineralogist or someone like that. That is beyond the average gemologist know. We know that it has this property. We don't necessarily know why. But the fact that it's there is enough for me. This instrument can tell me the difference between red spinel and red rubies. And the list goes on and on and on. Natural or heated zircon are also going to have a diagnostic pattern that can be viewed with the spectroscope. So again, for a low investment, somewhere between one and $200 for this type can get you some very powerful information. And again, we're talking about something you can just put in your pocket. A one-time buy, as long as you treat it right. If you're going to be buying loose gemstones, please make sure you do not leave home without a pair of tweezers. If you're just holding a stone in your hand, the color from your fingers, the color from your clothing can influence the color of the stone. So being able to hold the stone properly and inspect it from a reasonable distance in the right lighting conditions is absolutely essential for evaluating high-end stones. If it's cheap and you don't care about money, then fine, you can do whatever you want. But if you want to accurately evaluate a stone, Tweezers are important. There are both titanium and iron tweezers. Most of us prefer iron. And some of the gem cutters that I've talked to notice that when people use titanium tweezers, oftentimes there are more scratches around the girdle of the stone where we typically hold the stone. So once they discovered that, their entire company switched back to iron tweezers. They're not that heavy, come on. Tweezers. And those certainly will not break the bank. If you like the locking kind that have a pressure lock, then fine, get those. Personally, I think it gets in the way. I like the kind without locking unless I'm doing video. If I'm doing video, being able to lock the stone in the tweezers and rotate it without worrying about dropping the stone is a nice feature. So you choose what you want, maybe get both. And the last essential thing that may not even be essential is the Chelsea filter. This really depends on what types of stones you're going to be dealing with. If you're going around and testing aquamarine and you want to make sure that you're not getting cobalt-doped synthetic spinel, this is a very useful tool. 
if you're dealing with emeralds regularly. This is a useful tool. If you're dealing with rubies, this may even be a useful tool as well. Because this really only shows you fluorescence based on chromium or cobalt. Theoretically, it can show you some other things, but not with enough certainty to really be dependable in my opinion. If somebody wants to fight me on that in the comments, then I'd love to hear their points. So a Chelsea filter, again, very inexpensive. This is something like 20 bucks. I'm sure that depends on which country you live in and duties and all that, but anyhow, not expensive. And the only other thing I'd really say you need is to take around a cloth, which sounds ridiculous, but it's not. Whether it's a microfiber cloth or a small suede cloth, being able to clean a gemstone thoroughly before you inspect it is actually important. Whether you're using a microscope, a loop, or just your eyes, the oils from yours and other people's fingers will influence the color, as well as your ability to view inclusions. And the clarity of a gemstone definitely impacts its price. So please make sure that you get a good cloth. It can be the ones that you use to clean your sunglasses. I don't care. Just nice and soft. And the goal is really to get the oils and schmutz off of the gemstone before you view it. Cloth. I don't even know how much these cost. They're cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So those are the things that I would suggest to you. You don't need everything, just decide what you need to do the job that you need to do. If you're going to be a gemologist, over time you will want to get all of these things. You can start with the less expensive ones, but some things like a refractometer will be needed sooner than later. But if you're not going to be a gemologist determining what mystery stones are, then you don't necessarily need that. You can go for some of these other items. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, tell all of your friends about me. And if you've got any questions, feel free to write them in the comments section below. If you would like to explore more about gemstones, then head over to gemshepherd.com where you can contact me directly. And also read more blogs, etc. about gemstones and investing in gemstones. That's all I've got for today, so thank you very much. And until next time, I'll say bye-bye.